Well, it's a brand new year, and what better way to kick off 2017 than with a good old 80s slasher movie? What? Movie studios usually release horror movies in January anyways. Technically, this makes more sense than if I reviewed one in October. So the 80s gave us slasher movies set at summer camp, high school reunions, and even slumber parties. So hey, why not have one set at a sorority house? Actually, this movie has a bigger connection to Slumber Party Massacre, since not only did Roger Corman executive produce both movies, but he even got Slumber Party assistant director Carol Frank to write and direct this one. So with the movie written and directed by a woman, maybe this means this won't have all the gratuitous nudity that other slasher movies... <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't even make it through that sentence. It's an 80s slasher movie, of course there's gonna be nudity! You know you're watching a slasher movie when even the title screen appears to have just been murdered. Also, we're only a minute and a half in, and already the movie appears to have driven itself insane. Oh, wait, I guess this is one of those movies that's told in flashback. It must have all started the moment I entered the house. So your story starts at the beginning, huh? Good, because that's where the movie should have started. Jeez, worst sorority house ever. The place isn't even furnished. Also, I don't know if it's a good idea to let guys join this sorority. Actually, this part's just a dream sequence from a guy in an insane asylum. And get used to it, because there's going to be a lot more of these. Anyway, let's meet our characters. I was getting worried about you. How have you been? Just okay. I've been going for that 80s Demi Moore look, but I don't know if I'm pulling it off, you know? This is our main character, Beth, who wants to join the sorority. And you'll see, after a weekend with us, you're gonna wanna join this sorority. Yeah, just wait until she gets to the hazing. I hear it can be murder at this place. Plus, Beth also seems to be having some weird dreams. Okay, we've got an 80s slasher movie produced by Roger Corman, so is this gonna try and be like Halloween, Friday the 13th, or Nightmare on Elm Street? there. Be careful. Mm, Nightmare on Elm Street, very nice. Boy, the 80s version of The Exorcist is really big on denim. And this dream house is a lot better than the other one. It's actually furnished. Beth should join this sorority. Oh, and I was wrong earlier. The movie's actually trying to be like Tourist Trap. <laughs> oh look, even the sorority house is on its period. <laughs> I say? Because dreams have deeper meanings, clearly this means Beth's afraid of baseball. And also possibly of getting murdered. Oh man, I just dreamt I joined a sorority with a bunch of dippy 80s valley girls at... Oh. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi. You wouldn't happen to have a sweater to go with this, would you? Ah, come on, you don't need a sweater. That outfit's ugly enough already. Speaking of 80s fashions, you know what's a great look on a woman? Shoulders like a linebacker. Yeah. Well, at least Beth seems to be anticipating the grunge look. Unfortunately, she's got her pants set to Grandpa. So these are our other main characters. Girl who's not gonna make it to the end 1, girl who's not gonna make it to the end 2, and girl who's not gonna make it to the end 3. Everybody got that? Good. Meanwhile, orderlies Neil Hamburger and Robbie Carlyle check on the guy in the insane asylum from earlier, but it looks like he's already made it to the house. Man, come on, we gotta go. Okay, admittedly, that's a pretty cool image. I just wish it hadn't been made by Michael Myers Kruger here. You know, if it were possible to sum up the 80s in one image, I think this would be it. This is probably a close second, though. These girls might want to be careful. It looks like they're being stalked by a boom mic. Meanwhile, our mental patient is either about to be given a lie detector test, or they're installing his new Commodore VIC-20. I don't know what his problem is, but he wants it out bad. What does he think's out there? Freedom? And there's something very suspicious about this hospital. Was it something that... Hold it. Something's wrong. I'm getting a high incidence of theta waves. Oh, I knew it! Scientology Hospital! The girls learn they've got the house all to themselves for the weekend, although if you keep having visions of people getting murdered, you should probably consider joining another sorority. Especially when they end like this. What is it? I'm sorry, it's just... Fake-out scares like that are really cliché and lame. 
We also learn the guy in the asylum has a psychic connection to Beth. I wonder if that means they're related. Spoiler alert, it does. Well, it looks like this guy's still violent and weird, but what are the girls gonna do now that they've got the house to themselves? God, do you know what I've always wanted to do? Try on Cindy's clothes. Oh, you know what that means. Fashion show! Pretty woman, walking down the street. Pretty woman, the kind I like to meet. Alright, alright, that's not the song that plays. This is. That's right, 80s sitcom intro music. By the way, did I mention this movie was written and directed by a woman? What's the matter, Beth? Too old for dress up? No, it's just that we're 20 minutes in and there's already been enough horrendous 80s fashion in this movie to level a city block. Is the killer doing anything? Hey, violent, agitated psychopath, I'm here to give you your food without taking any precautions, and oh, who could have seen that coming? The inmate makes his escape, which means we get our first killer POV shot and... No. Oh. Okay, never mind. This place really needs to invest in some new security, since not only do I think they left the gate open, but the barbed wire on their fence disappears as soon as somebody climbs it. Back at the house, the girls decide to analyze Beth's visions, but first, let's get shit-faced! Martinis for your New York Freudians, tonics for the Jungians among us, tab for the behavioralists. And Pap's Blue Ribbon for the hipster douchebags. Okay, now it looks like we're getting a POV shot from the killer at- Oh, God damn it! Now, come on, man. You're in a hardware store and you don't even look at the chainsaws? What kind of slasher movie is this? What are you doing there? Ah. Oh, jeez. I probably should have seen that coming. Oh, well. I'll just let you be on your way. Anyway, how's the dream analysis going? What does a guy with a knife mean? It means you're weird, girl. Look, the guy probably represents the opposite sex. Hmm, so you're saying the guy represents a guy. Interesting. But please, tell me more about Beth's dreams. The knife is a phallic symbol. Uh-oh, Beth. Scared of sex? Hey, if you knew not having sex was the only way to make it to the end, you'd be scared too. Okay, this time we finally got a legit POV shot from the killer and- ah! Alright, fine, I'll just take a POV shot from the car. Phew, it's just some boys. I was worried it was gonna be a cat scare. Wait a second, what are they doing here? What are you guys doing here? Oh, well, you know us. Always up for a little TP party. Alright, time to throw a party that would get them accused of cultural appropriation at a college today! Woo! And I wasn't kidding about the asylum having bad security, since it apparently took them until nighttime to even realize somebody was missing. Hopefully the cops can help. Are you still missing? If you ask me, he's not missing. He's gone. And if you ask me, you're not an idiot, you're a moron. Back at the sorority house, the power goes out, which means it's time to tell some scary stories. And then he took a pickaxe. And he crept up on his mom and dad in this very room. And bam! <laughs> he let them have it. Why does it feel like this guy's describing a better slasher movie? Turns out this isn't a story, though, since years earlier, the previous owners of the house were brutally murdered. Boy, I bet Beth wishes she would have known that before she gave him her security deposit. Not to mention all the fake-out scares in this place. <gasps> Jesus, John, what are you doing? There's gonna be a lot more of these, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, I was right. And if the power's out, how the hell are they watching TV? Well, at least the killer finally seems to have made it to the house, unless this is just another one of Beth's visions. <sighs> okay, does that count as a fake scare? Seriously, they've had three of them in less than two minutes, I can't tell anymore! It's a good thing this isn't a poltergeist movie, or else that Smurf doll would come to life and attack her. And can we please do something about the lights? Why? The TV works and we can all see clearly. What's the big deal? <sighs> okay, fine. I'll go fix it. <gasps> Craig! Okay, four fake-out scares in under three minutes? You can fuck right off with that shit, movie! Why am I sorry? No, you're not. You're gonna keep doing it. I can tell. 
Looks like the killer's finally here. Either that or Clark Griswold. He'll have to wait, though. Beth needs to keep talking about her dreams. It's okay, Beth. We're all here. Nothing's gonna happen. But something's already happened. It's like he's already here. That's because he is. Beth also says she saw the killer put a knife in the fireplace in one of her visions, which they end up finding. And I'm not sure, but I think this is the first step to solving a Resident Evil puzzle. Why is it dirty? Cause it was just in the fireplace, dumbass! How is it we're 45 minutes in and none of these characters are dead yet? Come on, you're in the driveway, get in there and start killing! Hey, who are you? What's the plan here, buddy? You gotta go freeze and be like... <laughs> Thank you! There's a look that says, well, this is a minor inconvenience. The rest of them decide to hypnotize Beth, who reveals that the killer is actually her brother Bobby, who murdered the rest of her family when she was a child in the same house. That's right, the plot of the movie involves a psycho escaping from a mental institution and returning home to stalk a woman who is revealed to be his long-lost sister. Can't decide if you want your movie to be like Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street? Screw it, just be like both. One upside to having a TP party, you get to have some TP sex. Yeah, I'll be John Smith, you be poke hot ass, and I'll conquer you. What's the matter? We're about to have sex in an 80s horror movie. This isn't going to end well. <laughs> well, great. Now they have to set up the TP again. Thanks a lot. Oh, and he just murdered your girlfriend. Craig's forced to run naked to the house, but fortunately he puts some shorts on before he gets to the door. Some guy just killed Tracy. You cut the line. We gotta get through to the police. Just make sure you let him know the killer's gone and not missing. That detail is very important. Okay, seriously, movie, unless Bobby's about to welcome Beth to prime time, bitch, you can cool it with the dream sequences already. Beth's making a huge mistake here. She should know spooning with a guy leads to stabbing. Hey, uh, Beth, in your dreams you didn't happen to see anybody hide some guns in the house, did you? Cause that would really come in handy right about now. I should keep him out. Yeah, that dresser's got to weigh at least 30 pounds. They decide to escape out the window and... Oh, wait a second. Are they really doing it? Is this a real POV shot? Yeah, we finally got one! Say, Craig, since when did you turn into the killer and... Oh, shit. Their adrenaline must really be pumping into overdrive. They're hitting him with all the urgency of a play fight with their little brother. Right? Come on, that was a two-story fall onto grass. There's no way he could have survived that. Actually, not only is he not dead, apparently he's fucking Superman. They're two stories up! How the hell did he do that? <laughs> hey everyone, I'm still in this movie. Oh wait, no, I'm dead. The girls try to escape from Bobby, and they prove once and for all that the most important weapon in a slasher movie is peripheral vision. And sure, just hide in the basement. It worked in Night of the Living Dead, didn't it? You sure it isn't Lori? How could he know that you'd be here? The same way I knew he was coming. If you knew he was coming, you probably should have gotten the fuck out of there a lot sooner. The girls decide to make a break for the front door, but first they're gonna need some weapons. Okay, you've got some weapons. Now it's time for the final showdown between Michael and Lori. I mean, Freddie and Nancy. I mean, Bobby and Beth. I think they might have picked some bad weapons, though, since Bobby appears to be shovel-proof. Or not. And damn it, don't hit the floor beside him! Now you're never gonna get your security deposit back! He's dead. Sweetie, you're in an 80s slasher movie. There is no way he's not getting back up again. <gasps> See? Told you. I'll get you a phone. Please, please don't move. Don't move? He's still coming after you. Plus, I'm pretty sure she's dead. Well, shovels may not have been enough to kill Bobby, but fortunately for Beth, he isn't foreshadowing proof. The cops finally arrive, and with no witnesses left to corroborate her story, Beth was promptly arrested for murdering her sorority sisters. The end. Or is it? Beth. Nah, when you've already taken stuff from Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street, might as well add Friday the 13th and Carrie while you're at it. 
Like I said at the beginning, this movie was made by some of the people involved with Slumber Party Massacre, but whereas that movie was intended to be a comedy that poked fun at slasher movie cliches, this one plays it straight and as a result just comes across as a cliched 80s slasher movie. Which would be fine if the slasher movie elements were entertaining, but both the villain and the kills are just kind of bland and generic. Knife kill, knife kill, knife kill, knife kill, you get the idea. One asset is Angela O'Neill, who gives a likable performance as Beth, but besides that, I'd only recommend this one to hardcore slasher movie fans. So there's my first video of 2017. In addition to more horror movies, I'm going to try and spotlight more weird animation, more martial arts action, more Godzilla, and maybe even some genres that I haven't done before. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. Let's spend the night in the teepee. Oh, but it's not up. Don't worry, baby. I can get it up.